Hello everyone, hope you're doing great. Recently, Amazon front-end engineer Alex Lee, aka Tech Rally, joined me on the Scrimba live stream to talk all things portfolio. He gave us a ton of amazing advice about how to make a knockout portfolio without using a load of your time on it. And now we've condensed that chat down into eight fantastic tips to help you on the road to creating a brilliant tech portfolio. So stay tuned because this advice really is golden. Let's get into it. When should people start thinking about making their portfolio? This is a great question. And in, in some sense, it doesn't even have to be a finished portfolio. You can just have your portfolio in stealth mode or incognito mode, in a sense, if you don't have the projects to show for it. If you have a decent grasp of HTML, CSS, and at least just a little bit of JavaScript, then you should be able to use my course and then just build a portfolio relatively easily. If you ask me to build a portfolio from scratch, and maybe we can kind of allude to this later, but the whole concept of like design and color schemes and all of those things, it's very, very difficult. And even if you ask me about it, I'm not the, the expert, but there are a lot of great people that have already done the hard work for you and they've already made the HTML templates for you. All you're doing is identifying where those default values are and then just replacing it with your content. So in your case, like you would replace John Smith with like Leanne. And then, you know, you just keep moving forward and forward, like replace their projects with your projects. It's not really rocket science in a sense, but you still need to understand like how HTML and CSS works to be able to actually make those uh, developer yeah. decisions to do it. Yeah. So yeah. I would say start early as possible if you have the skills. So from what you're saying, you can move away from the design side of things and just get someone else to do it for you, which sounds amazing. Yeah, 100%. And there's nothing wrong with it. I know some people have said, oh, are you cheating or are you not really showing your actual skills? And if you have the time mm -hmm. to do it, definitely consider it. But you have to be very, very confident in your design skills because when yeah. hiring managers or recruiters look at the portfolio, they're giving it like 10 seconds and just to give an example, like if you go on the Scrimba site, it's beautiful. It's very colorful. It has great color schemes. It has like a lot of art that really just makes it pop. But I assume a designer was involved in some kind of aspect of this to like make it really look good. And if you don't have the resources to really come up with those kinds of aesthetics, it's better to reach out and see what is already out there and then kind of do that find and replace in my opinion. So can you tell us offhand where we can find such designs that we might be able to use? A paid resource could be a website called ThemeForce. Mm -hmm. ThemeForce is pretty good in my opinion in the sense that they, there's some price ranges between like five to like ten dollars and there's some other uh, resources for portfolios that you can use mm -hmm. that are free but you kind of have to keep that watermark there as part of like being able to use mm -hmm. it for free. So it's really up to you to see like, hey, is it worth to spend the five, 10, $15 to buy this uh, theme and then kind of work with it. Will a hiring manager know or indeed care that I've used a theme? In a sense, yes, they will know if they've seen a lot of the portfolios. But my recommendation, even with the course is, hey, I gave you like a skeleton layout of what you can follow, but I highly encourage you to customize certain things once you feel very confident about it, right? Even if they do know that you use the theme or they know that they've seen this theme, who cares, right? At the end of the day, what they really care about is your projects and your skill sets and all of those things. So even even if the portfolio may not be as unique as something you built from scratch, it does have a structure that hiring managers and recruiters are used to. I think the secret sauce is really going to come into play when you're able to look at the projects themselves. If the projects are superb and excellent, then they're going to that's what they're going to care about. They're, then they're going to dive deep into your GitHub account and all of those things. But the portfolio is just I, I always consider it like a museum where it holds art paintings. It's just a house or just a location or a hub to kind of house your uh, actual projects. But outside of that, like you don't need to make it so fancy. And like I know some people care deeply about these like animations that like flash in and like spark whenever yeah. you like, click a button or something. But if anything, that gets really noisy. And sometimes, you know, it might not be very uh, pleasing to the eye like I noticed like sometimes it just comes out and it just hurts my eyes to like be on this portfolio and if anything I would just want to skip it but if you're able to just really highlight hey these are my projects hey this is who I am hey click on these links 
that's all that really matters at the end of the day. Do hiring managers care about CVs more or portfolios? I think portfolio is a little bit more important because that's probably going to be the first thing that a hiring manager will see. And generally, CVs are more integrated when you start like applying to jobs through like the job portals. So the portfolio is really nice if you're reaching out to a recruiter and then you send them your portfolio or like you can at also attach a portfolio as well. A CV is always going to be more catered towards the job that you're applying for. And that's why they always recommend like customizing your CV depending on what company it is. That way you could show like interest in that company saying like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm so excited for this company that they raised their Series B. I really feel like you're going to be able to accomplish so many things like X, Y, Z. And then you can kind of like add that to your CV and like really show genuine interest. But a portfolio is a little bit more like generalist perspective of trying to get as many eyes on it as possible, as well as like kind of that social proof that says you're a software developer. So both have equal importance, but they play a different role. And I personally, for me, like as an experienced developer, like once you get that experience and once you become one or two years in the industry, I really feel like the CV is not as important because the demand for software engineers, experienced software engineers is so high that people are kind of willing to just forego CVs and even portfolios. They just kind of base everything based on your LinkedIn saying like, hey, this person has like two, three years of experience. Hmm. Let's try to recruit him. And that's why it's just so important to think about like priorities and where you are in your stage as a software developer to like determine like, is this worth doing? Is this not worth doing? Do I need a portfolio if I've got my GitHub going on? In the beginning, if you've asked me, I would have said GitHub is not as important. But the more and more I talk to other software developers, there are hiring managers that will look at your GitHub and look very thoroughly at your GitHub. So having a presentable GitHub is mm. going to be super important, uh, especially early in your career. The whole concept of having like a presentable GitHub, presentable portfolio, CV, all of those things are really important in the beginning of your career because you're trying to land that first job in tech. Early in your career, it really is important to like have all of your bases covered. In your portfolio, if you're gonna be presenting a project, make sure you link your GitHub to it and then once you mm -hmm. get to your GitHub, make sure your readme is very like thorough and clean and very straight to the point of what you're trying to build. Maybe add some like GIFs or um, videos of your application as well as like a URL. So sometimes mm -hmm. people are going to go straight into your GitHub without going through your portfolio. And then you could kind of create that closed loop. If someone goes straight to your GitHub, maybe just give them direct access to the site on your readme. But if someone goes to your portfolio, then you could provide the GitHub and the URL. Is it necessary for the projects on that portfolio to be deployed? 100%. Not only deploy, but I encourage you to buy a domain. It costs like $5. It doesn't have to be those premium.com domains or anything like that. But if you're not willing to invest in yourself, then how can you expect like a hiring manager or recruiter to invest in you? It's not like we're saying you need to go out and spend $5,000 on something exorbitant, some like weird, like scammy course kind of thing. It's $5 mm -hmm. that you're spending on yourself to make sure you have like a professional domain. And if you take my course, you can actually deploy your website for free. So the only thing you're paying for is the domain, right? If a hiring manager is looking at 20 like engineers, and there's probably going to be way more like 80 to 100, and your domain says like dot Heroku app, or you're telling me I need to go into your GitHub while the other 99 people just have like a straight domain and I could just look at it immediately. Who do you think I would ignore first? <laughs> I guess is the real question, right? Like yeah. it's pretty obvious. Like I, if I have to do extra work, I'm not going to do it because 99 other people have done the extra work for me. Would it be inconvenient for you to look at your own portfolio or look at your own projects, right? If that's the case, then Maybe you should consider like, hey, let's just deploy it, put it out there and see what happens. Are certificates necessary on a portfolio? I'm not a huge fan of certificates, to be honest, but there are some well-recognized like certifications like AWS and, and it's not because I work at Amazon, but like I've heard, <laughs> I've heard a yeah. lot of great things about like people putting those types of certificates on, but it's not going to get you a job. Like as in, in a sense, like there's, you're still going to go through the interview process and all of those things. If anything, having those certificates and stuff can be like supplemental for you to get those interviews, right? So if you are able to get some certificates that will help you stand out, go for it, but don't expect it to be like your golden ticket to like get your job 100%. I actually don't have any certificates myself. I've heard other people on Twitter spaces talk about like, 
it's really good to have, especially if you don't have um, like some traditional form of education. So this could kind of be that education aspect of it. So I don't want to ever discount it, but you kind of kind of have to, like I said, again, like the priority ladder, like what's the most important thing? 